We are most excited here today at Magic Cabin because we have a very special visitor to introduce to you who has come all the way from the Bavarian Alps of Germany. She is reuniting with some of her family now and anxious to tell you the story of how things all began and the magic that continues. Please meet Andrea Christensen of Keta Cruz. Hi, I'm very happy to be here from, you know, our Alps to the rolling hills of um, Virginia. And um, it is my third or fourth time that I've been coming here. And I would like to tell you a little bit about our dolls. Um, Katie Kruse, as you might know, is the founder of my company. And she was born a long time ago, in 1883. And um, she was a very talented actress. And she came to Berlin at the very young age of only 17 years. And there she met, you know, this beautiful man, Max. And they soon got together, became a pair, uh, a married couple, and they had kids. So on the first, there was Mima Lin. And when she was three years old, there was Fifi on her way. And Mima Lin, sawing uh, the little girl, said, oh, Mama, I would like to have a little baby just like you, um, just like a, a little, you know, little baby I can take care of. So Kitty Cruz is sending off her artistic husband in Berlin to look for a doll. And he was running around all the stores and couldn't find anything. And he said, well, how on earth can you develop, you know, loving and mothering instincts and love with all these hard dolls? They were made out of porcelain or hard wood. And they were not to play with. They were actually grown up. So he said, why don't you sit down and make some yourself? There won't be a better time to develop your artistic feelings. And she said, well, sit down and make it myself. And then she came up with an idea and she took what was available up where she came from, a potato, a simple potato, um, a piece of cloth or a towel. And she put the towel around the potato. And she knotted the ends. And they became arms and legs that again, put the potato wet. So probably she did it a little different. I still have to learn how to do that. So she knotted the ends for arms and legs. And put it around the, the potato. And then she took some warm sand from Ascona, where she stayed, this is in uh, Switzerland, put it into the body, took a match, a burnt match, started to make eyes and a nose and a mouth. And that was the first kitty cruise doll. You can imagine, it didn't last very long. I mean, there went the potato, but she continued baking dolls. And if you take that concept, which she found out it was warm and huggable, it was something really to love and to cherish. You still find it in our today's towel dolls. Here, not with a doll head, but with a little animal head. And this is what they really love. The very young children, when they are born, it's a security blanket. They ab absorb the scent from the surroundings, and they feel safe, and they know the scents. They think mama is around, and they kind of play around with the little knots, they can put it in their mouth, have it as a little teether, it is washable. It's just a perfect little doll for the very new, the very recently born child. Well, as I said, this was in 1905. In 1910, then Kitty Kruse came out with her very first doll in Berlin. And, you know, people were raving, there was an exhibition called Homemade Toys, and they looked at her dolls and they said, oh, this is exactly the egg of plumbers. They are made out of cloth. They are soft. They are huggable. And most important of all, they are little children. They are not grown-ups anymore. They are little children companions for the girl and the boy. And something to be really loved and cherished. And you know, through the years, ever since 1910 up until now, um, there was this time in 1989, 
where um, we got a phone call, and it was a friend of ours working at a bank, and he said, you know, Kitty Cruiser Dog Company is up for sale. And, you know, I got this, you know, probably astonished expression on my face that my dream came true. Because when I was 13, I was writing uh, a little something for school about what do you want to be when you're grown up? And I said, I would like to own Kitty Cruiser. And how could this dream catch me? Um, I mean, it's probably something if you plan it, it won't never materialize. So I went to the cellar, got my four Kitty Cruiser dolls, and this is what it was. You know, my husband, an American, said, Kitty Cruiser, I quite don't know what it is. So I explained to him. And he also said, well, this is something we should look at. So we went to see the um, uh, studios that are in Upper Bavaria, in Donova. And it was a decision right at heart. We met the owners, the daughter of Kitty Cruiser, her husband, and a couple of months later we were able to purchase the company. And, you know, we went to the fairs. And this is where I also met the founder of Magic Cabin Dolls. And, you know, I chased her down the aisles because I said, I really would like to talk to her because she had the same idea about what a doll should look like. It should be a little child. And let me just pick out one of, um, these wild of dolls. Um, they are, you know, little girls, as you can tell. She's a little redhead with freckles. And um, the facial features are individually handmade and stitched. So, like a little child, they are all different. They are not, none of them are, are alike. They are always your little doll, your little girl, or boy. And they come in a nice cotton dress. Um, they have stockings or, and they have long, wonderful woolen hair that you can braid with your hands. And, you know, that really goes back to the ideals of Kitty Cruiser, that a doll should be huggable, should be a child, and express warmth. And of course, it was not only this doll, but we developed all doll families. Um, the recent edition is the birthday doll. And it was inspired by it's just something I really love, and Magic Cabin really loves. So it was easy to come about. Uh, she has a purse, a real purse, with a real opening. So no disappointments. Very often if you, if you get a doll, you know, they may look nice, but then you have these disappointments that you cannot take the clothing on and off. And that's important for role play. Kids love to play what just happened during the day. They want to dress and undress. They want to be happy, they want to talk secrets to the ear. And you know, these friends, they really keep the secrets. They're not telling anybody else. They're not running around saying, well, Mary Jane said that. No, they keep it. So they are friends for life with the secrets. She has a knit hat, and if you look closely, you find white dots like with the book dots. And she wears um, a skirt and a t-shirt, like our girls do today. And she has friends, the little wooden um, fairy friends. These are flexible dolls. Let me just take this fairy here. She has beautiful wings, and they are flexible. They can jump. They can. I always love to do that. They can pout. And they can fly. And they are full of imagination. And they live, you know, right behind your house, under the stairs. Have you ever looked there? You will find them. They have little houses. And they have furniture in there. And they bring everything from the woods and, and, and the gardens. And they also build their own little um, bed with leaves. 